All right, we are now recording. So to get us started. So good evening, my name is Connor Newman. I'm the mayor's liaison for the Alston Bright neighborhood. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm here tonight to facilitate this statutorily required cannabis community outreach meeting. Uh, this is an application by Castle Leaf LLC for a retail and manufacturing uh, cannabis dispensary license to be operated at the address of 100 Leo Birmingham Parkway. Before we start, I'd like to go over my expectations for tonight's meeting. We having participated in multiple meetings of this kind, I know this can be a sensitive topic. I wanna to make sure uh, that we all understand that no decisions are being made tonight and that no time will be acceptable to be disrespectful to anyone during this meeting. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. There is no right or wrong opinion. We are here tonight to try to collect as many comments and questions for this proposal. I'm not here to facilitate debates amongst neighbors or to relitigate state legislation. Questions and comments should be directed either to myself or to the applicant only. Applicants will answer all questions related to the proposal to the best of their ability, and I will answer questions specific to the city's process. If I'm unable or the applicants aren't able to answer any question tonight, we will follow up with you after the meeting to get you that information. This is an open comment period, meaning that if I do not get, if you do not get called on tonight, or if you think of a question that they have not been answered, or you want to have, uh, you know, follow up information, uh, just reach out to my office. You have my contact information on the flyer. And we can make that available to you. There will be no questions during the presentation. Once the presentation has concluded, I will again reiterate my expectations. To reiterate again, this is not a debate on the legalization or the morality of marijuana. That debate occurred at the ballot box, and we're here today because it is overwhelmingly supported in the city of Boston as well as the neighborhood of Alston Brighton. The applicant will go through the presentation in a timely manner, and the remainder of the time will be for orderly questions and comments. Thank you again for your taking your time to participate in tonight's meeting. I will now hand it over to the applicant for the presentation to start. Thank you. Thanks so John. much, Connor. Um, my name is Jonathan Capano. Uh, I am with Smith, Castell and Crawford. I'm going to kind of cross over a little bit with what Connor had to say, um, but there are a few compliance pieces that I need to touch on, uh, and then I'll turn it over to the representatives from Castle Leaf here tonight. Um, so with that, I will uh, head back over to slide two. So uh, good evening and welcome to the community meeting hosted by the City of Boston Neighborhood Services related to the applicant Castle Leaf LLC proposed marijuana retail and manufacturing use at 100 Leo M. Birmingham Parkway in Brighton. My name is John Capano. I'm an associate at Smith, Costello and Crawford Public Policy Law Group. I'm joined by Connor Newman of the Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. Um, together we'll kind of be trading off, moderating and uh, working on the meeting together tonight. Um, All right, so pursuant to local planning ordinances and state requirements, including MGL Chapter 94G and the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission, which we'll often refer to as the CCC tonight, this meeting is a public meeting and it's also being recorded. Uh, the video recording of this meeting will be made available by the city following tonight's meeting. Um, so this is where I'll go over kind of the state mandates, how they cross over with the city's uh, application requirements. Uh, so I'll try to move through this quickly so we can get to the presentation from the applicant tonight. So on April 27th, 2020, the CCC issued an administrative order allowing virtual community outreach meetings in order to comply with the governor's emergency order. Uh, we understand that as of today, the CCC extended the virtual community outreach meeting order through September 2021. There are some requirements here that the applicant must meet uh, for the CCC, which um, will go through the application process both with the city and the state. So first, the applicant shall obtain approval in writing from the contracting authority or an authorized representative of the host community to host a virtual community outreach meeting. We received written confirmation from Connor Newman on May 28th to host this meeting. Next, the applicant shall follow all accessibility guidelines, including the ADA accessibility guidelines, which includes closed captioning. Um, so I will also ask Connor for any input here. I believe the only way to do this is on your own screen. It's not a feature that we can turn on for the mass. Uh, if I'm correct on that, Connor. Yes, I believe that's the case. Um, but on our end with the recording, we can uh, create a transcript as well. We can provide to residents upon their request. Great. 
Uh, thank you, Connor. Next, the applicant shall accept questions in advance, um, submitting in, submitted in advance of the meeting, which we will respond to during the meeting. Um, the applicant will detail how to submit questions in the notice. So in the flyer, you had seen uh, Connor's email, the city email at the bottom of our notice. I'll kind of get to that a little bit later on in um, kind of explaining how this meeting will work a little bit closer uh, to the end of my presentation. Next, the applicant shall post on a publicly accessible website all meeting materials at least 24 hours in advance of the meeting. We had this presentation posted on the city's website along with the public notice. Uh, the slides were made available on June 10th. Next, the applicant shall ensure full compliance with the notice requirements for community outreach meetings. So from the state perspective, the CCC, regulation, uh, CCC regulations mandate us to have three notices. First, we advertise in a newspaper that's frequently circulated throughout the community. Uh, our newspaper ad, which was the flyer, was in the Boston Herald on May 25th, uh, 2021. Next, the notice to the municipality, uh, oh, excuse me, the first notice, the newspaper notice required 14 days in advance notice of the meeting. Uh, the next two uh, require seven days advance notice uh, prior to the meeting. Uh, so that being a notice to the municipality, which was sent out by Connor and our team on May 28th. Third, uh, and a mailing to all abutters within a 300 foot radius. Um, this is where the, the local process and the state process uh, kind of cross lines. The city requires our applicant to do certified mailing, which we took care of on June 2nd. The local process also requires us to do flyering of the neighborhood at least seven days in advance of the meeting. This took place on June 3rd. Next, the applicant shall designate a meeting moderator. That individual shall not be associated with the, with the applicant, but may be associated with the host community. Uh, as Connor mentioned, he's hosting on behalf of the city here tonight. Next, the applicant shall submit to the commission the number of participants attending the meeting. Right now, uh, we have 111 total attendees in the meeting. Uh, I'll also refer to that number at the close of the presentation and at the close of question and answering, just so we have it on the record and everyone's um, aware. Next. The applicant shall submit to the commission a recording of the meeting as an attachment to their license application. We also submit, or we would submit to the host community, but since the host community is uh, hosting tonight's meeting, they will also have a recording which they will make available to the public. Okay, next. Um, Council Leaf will provide you with a presentation of their project, and it will be question and answering period to address any questions you may have. This meeting isn't meant. To, it, this meeting is meant to enable communication and engagement, including questions and other interactions between the applicant and residents of the host community. In regard to how this meeting will work, the applicant will first address any questions that were submitted in advance of the meeting. Following the applicant's addressing of these pre-submitted questions, if you'd like to ask a question. Please use the raise hand feature or the chat feature, and Connor will take them in the order as which they come. Before the applicant begins their presentation, I'd like to provide you with some background. As you may know, the residents of Brighton overwhelmingly voted for cannabis legalization in 2016. As a result, in pursuance to MGL Chapter 94G, Section 3, the City of Boston shall host a minimum of 52 marijuana retailers. This meeting is not a debate on the merits of cannabis legalization. Those issues have already been decided by voters. Tonight, the questions before you relate only to the viability and the desirability of this particular location and to this particular operator. To this end, this community meeting is for Castle Leaf to present its plan and answer your questions and concerns. We thank you all for participating this evening and to those who sent in their questions or comments in advance. I know that the applicant looks forward to presenting the plans and the details, addressing any questions, and engaging in a respectful and constructive open community dialogue. At this time, we have 117 attendees. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Castle Leaf co founder and Brighton resident, Dwan Packnett, to give you an overview of Castle Leaf's proposed marijuana retailer and marijuana manufacturing use at 100 Leo M. Birmingham Parkway. Dawn, I'm going to go to your slide. 
Thank you, Jonathan, and thanks to my friends, neighbors, and fellow community members who took the time to join us this evening. The Castle Leaf team appreciates your engagement, and we are excited to bring this project to Brighton as we believe it will be meaning it will meaningfully contribute to the community. It's great to be back, as many of you may remember us from our BA. IA presentation back in the pre COVID days of October 2019, where we received approval to move forward with this project. We are so pleased to be here before you this evening to, to, to provide an update. As Jonathan said, my name is Dewan Packnett. I am a Brighton resident in Cleveland Circle. I have lived there for the past 11 years, and for the Patriot Day uninitiated, that would be mile 21 of the Boston Marathon. If you don't already know this about me, I am a community organizer at heart, vice chair of Ward 21 Democratic Committee, a member of the BAIA, and a giddy Boston Marathon volunteer on mile 21, the absolute best job ever. So you can probably guess that I love being involved. I am a lawyer, which for some is not necessarily a good thing, but my legal background and heightened community awareness born of working on political campaign phone banks and knocking on doors, which many of you may know me from, has helped me better understand that reasonable people often have competing interests and how together we can work towards consensus and arrive at compromise. Nearly two years ago, in September 2019, I left a public service career dedicated to housing and neighborhood development to pursue the, my next chapter. From leading land acquisition of venue sites in Northern Georgia for the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games to leading affordable housing initiatives in the Department of Neighborhood Development and Mayor's Office of Economic Development at the City of Boston. My career of helping communities define and chart their futures across the Midwest and Southeastern United States has been most rewarding. And now here I am near the end of that career at the most exciting chapter yet working in the new cannabis industry. For me, my work in cannabis is an amazing extension of my community development career. With the right business operator, I believe the cannabis industry can become a locally based economic engine for enormous and equitable community benefit. As an African-American woman who, as an 11 year old sixth grader in segregated 1967 Chicago, integrated a white school in a working class white neighborhood less than three miles away from our modest bungalow in an almost physically identical working class black neighborhood, except for the race of the residents and the noticeable difference in the allocation of public resources for elementary schools. So I am well aware of the impacts, consequences, and disparities from failed government policies like the war on drugs. I felt it was important for someone with my understanding of the value of an economic opportunity to people in hardworking communities, whether in Chatham Avalon in Chicago or Al Alston Brighton in Boston, that my company, Castle Leaf, set the standard of what opportunity, equity, and community investment should look like in the cannabis industry. In, in October 2019, I was fortunate enough to be recruited to one to become the director of community affairs for one of the state's largest and most distinguished seed to sale cannabis operator, Sierra Naturals. Three months later, the Sierra executive team created the Department of Government Relations and Community Investment. I was asked to lead this new and innovative department as its vice president, focused on ensuring meaningful community investment in the cannabis industry with an emphasis on engaging the community towards workforce development, employment, and local entrepreneurship, and investment in people, the true building blocks of community investment and economic mobility. I love my job, seriously. With zero incidents and seven years of operation, Sierra Naturals has set the gold standard for cannabis operations on the East Coast. In fact, the State Cannabis Control Commission frequently uses Sierra's locations as the training ground for new inspectors to show them what a good operation should look like. I share this because I want you to know the Sierra Natural Standards are my baseline expectations for our own company. I understand Brighton is looking for a good neighbor, and I assure you, Castle Leaf will take this commitment to community very seriously. It's personal to us all. That is why, in my work with Sierra Naturals, 
I led the industry in creating the first in the, st in the state accelerator program to support economic empowerment applicants of open retail stores. I helped co-found the Cultivated program in concert with Roxbury Community College, the Urban League, and others to create the cannabis industry's first in the nation higher education and workforce training program for returning citizens. And I served during the successful signing of the state's first collective bargaining agreement in the Massachusetts cannabis industry and created the state's first cannabis apprenticeship program with UFCW Local 1445. These experiences and successes led to the founding of Castleaf with Galaxy Integrated Technologies founder and CEO, Michael McDay, right here in my own backyard. Since its founding in Brighton in 1984, Galaxy has provided state-of-the-art security for major institutions, including Gillette Stadium, Logan Airport, Mass General Hospital, and two local ho hospitals, St. Elizabeth's and Franciscan. I am so pleased and inspired to call a Brighton business owner the caliber of Michael McDay, a partner in Castle Leaf. As Castle Leaf's largest equity partner, I find myself with a once in a lifetime chance to meaningfully invest in myself to the benefit of my family and in the people, businesses, and civic interests of my own community, Alston Brighton. I want to thank Dave and Kyle Gamboni, two local Boston business leaders, for investing in this project Michael and I formed. And I am excited to see this project come to life. And now Dave Gamboni will tell you a bit about himself. Dave? Thank you, Dawn. Let me first say that as longtime entrepreneurs, your vision and energy for Castle Leaf and the cannabis industry has really been inspiring to Kyle and I. Um, we've had several opportunities in the past to invest in the cannabis space, but we've declined those until we were presented with the opportunity to invest in you, Michael, and this community. Next slide, please. Um, Castle Leaf is a 100% locally owned and operated adult use cannabis company made up of hardworking community members who have collectively lived, worked, or owned businesses in the Elson Brighton community for over 45 years. Kyle and I both live in Boston. I'm the father of a one-year-old girl, and my wife and I are expecting our second child in December. We plan to raise our family in Boston. Therefore, I am personally committed to ensuring this business may, maintains the highest possible operating standards and meaningfully benefits the community. We're dedicated to creating a community-driven business model that respects the values, interests, and principles of the Elson Brighton community. And we strive to be a model for other Boston communities as to how people who live and work in those communities can also become part of this burgeoning new industry. We plan to do this by focusing on hiring the majority of our workforce from the Elson Brighton community. Go on. Thank you, Dave. While Dave, Michael, and I make up the core ownership team, we are thrilled to be supported by an incredible cast of professionals, including slide eight, please. Including my colleague from Sierra Naturals, Michelle Foley. Michelle runs Sierra's retail operation and brings with her a long history of retail sales and management. Michelle and I have worked closely hand in hand at Sierra, most recently developing a retail community hybrid job model that incorporates community engagement activities into retail workforce development programming. So you can imagine when Castle Leaf became real, Michelle Foley was my first call to ask for her support and assistance. Jay Yeomans of Smith Costello and Crawford, a friend and colleague, and frankly, one of the smartest people I know. It's a little embarrassing, I'm sure, Jay. <laughs> Jay was a primary author of the state's medical use regulations and closely advised the state legislature in their redrafting of the ballot question in 2017. And finally, Tom Scott, co-founder of Scott Griffin Architects, a company that has supported numerous successful cannabis retail build-outs, including on North Beacon Street, just around the corner in Watertown. Castle Leaf will be successful, not only because we have the resources, world-class security, and a deep understanding of the community, but also because we have surrounded ourselves with best in class experts in cannabis retail design, operations, and compliance. And now you will hear from one of those experts, the incomparable Michelle Foley. Michelle? Thank you, Duan. Good evening, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Michelle Foley. I'm a proud uh, member of the SIRA team as Director of Retail Operations, working closely with my colleague Dwan at our day jobs at SIRA Naturals. I was so pleased to get a call from Dwan seeking assistance and support on this project as we now have an opportunity to adapt innovative methodologies to a small community retail setting. I've managed Sierra Naturals retail operations successfully for over three and a half years, and I know what is required to run a safe, professional, and operationally sound dispensary. Retail licenses that have maintained a zero incident or inspection violation ever. The three pillars form the foundation of any successful cannabis retail operation. Uh, the first one is compliance. Castle Leaf will set the gold standard and maintain a successful compliance record with a goal of zero deficiencies. We have extensive SOPs in place around security, preventing diversion, and inventory controls that all staff will be thoroughly trained on by our retail training manager. The second pillar is efficiency. Castle Leaf will maintain an efficient retail operation, always implementing new software and processes to further streamline our operations. As a result, we'll be able to process customers quickly and maintain a safe and secure area in and around the dispensary with no lines ever forming or disrupting the neighborhood. And the third pillar is experience. Not only does this pillar speak to the positive customer experience in our store, it also speaks to the positive experience we create within our host communities. For me, this project symbolizes what this cannabis industry can do for so many by creating true generational wealth opportunities. Opportunities that have been way too elusive for black and brown communities. Dwan knew she was interested in finding her place in this new industry, and we were fortunate enough at Sierra to engage her to lead our community and inclusion efforts, all while Dwan was able to learn the ins and outs of the cannabis industry to benefit herself and her vision for developing Castle Leaf. Now, as the largest equity partner in Castle Leaf, Dwan has an opportunity to create wealth for her, for her, her family, and for her community. This is exactly how the cannabis industry legislation was designed and what this industry should be doing. In that vein, Dwan and I are excited by the economic opportunities that this project will provide for this community in the way of jobs by and for Brighton. Slide nine, please. So the first phase of this project will be retail. Um, adult use retail on the first floor It is a two-story building. This will create 30 to 40 new jobs, 80% full-time entry level through management. And we will have a local hiring priority. And then phase two will be product manufacturing on the second floor. This will create five to 10 new careers, 80% full-time, provide specialized manufacturing skills, and build local brands through wholesale sales and, and distribution uh, to other dispensaries in the area. These are real jobs that can serve to provide economic opportunities and industry knowledge for others to follow in Dwan's footsteps, all housed right here in Brighton at 100 Leo M. Birmingham Parkway. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the property, property owner and Castle Leaf's co-founder, Michael McDade. Michael? He's on mute, I think. Yeah, Michael, you need to unmute yourself. I muted you because there were some feedback issues. Absolutely. How's that? <laughs> Great. Can you hear me? Perfect. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Michelle, for that introduction. As Dwan shared, I have owned and operated Galaxy for 37 years right here at 100 Leo M Birmingham Parkway. Galaxy provides clients all encompassing security, including on-site and remote management, security build-out, design and implementation, engineering support, security protocols, operational security, electronic security, and much, much more. We support clients from the armed forces, federal government agencies, to Gillette Stadium, the entire Kraft family, Mass General Hospital, and Landmark Center. Since legalization passed in 2016, I've personally been approached from several out-of-state cannabis operators who wanted to rent my building location here at 100 Leo Birmingham Parkway. However, I wanted to keep this real estate within the community because what's more important than making a buck is doing this the right way. I believe the right way is through a local company that knows the neighborhood. 
This is what Castle Leaf needs to make. Next slide, please. That's why Castle Leaf's business model is designed to reflect the values of Brighton. We have leveraged a high quality, secure location here in Brighton that we control and can use to address community concerns raised at other cannabis presentations. This location is commercially zoned on a single non-continuous parcel and hosts an existing large secure fortress style castle, two story, 7,100 square feet with parking and a loading dock. This site is located in a commercially zoned district away from schools, including our major universities and religious facilities, and it's accessible by car and multiple modes of public transportation. Next slide, please. Again, as you see, the location represents a highly secure building with concrete exterior, no street level windows, limited entry points, secure loading dock at rear of the building, and because of the trained security personnel and, and technology we will, we will deploy in and directly around the site, crime and neighborhood nuisances will be reduced and property values will materially increase. Next, Juan will explain what the Castle Leaf is proposing. Juan? Thank you, Michael. Castle Leaf is proposing a recreational marijuana retail facility to be located on the first floor of the two-story existing structure at 100 Leo M. Birmingham Parkway. We are also contemplating a future manufacturing use on the second floor to add commercial kitchen space to produce locally sourced cannabis edibles and infused products once we have our sea legs in operating our retail facility. Because the first floor retail space has significant square footage dedicated to customer management, approximately 3,700 square feet, all customer queuing will be internal to the existing structure. What that means is no lines will ever form outside of our building. Our proposed hours of operation will be Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Castle Leaf is committed to running a thoughtful, community-oriented location. Please know that we will have the ability and technology to shift to an appointment-only operations model as circumstances warrant. Michelle Foley understands the level of experience and judgment needed to make this determination and will incorporate this feature into our store manager's standard operating procedures. We expect to use appointment only through our initial launch and will not hesitate to use it when appropriate to, to ensure our business, visitors and customers do not contribute to the legendary traffic and parking issues in Brighton and the surrounding neighborhood. In fact, we will open at 10 a.m. after the morning rush hour out of respect for our neighbors and abutters. Next slide, please. As you can see from this exterior rendering, Castle Leaf will be significantly improving the curbside appeal of our building to ensure visibility and access to our indoor loading dock in the rear so that the product deliveries and cash pickups are safe, secure, and random. So while we're at it, why not improve the streetscape surrounding the perimeter of the building along Lincoln Street? We look forward to working with the community to come up with ways to engage local artisans to take full advantage of this creative opportunity to add murals, art installations, or landscaping to improve the street aesthetic so that it, that it reflects and embraces our local culture and identity. Next slide, please. Here at Castle Leaf, we have a multifaceted approach to transportation by making sure customers are aware of the, of the variety of ways to access our retail store. First, there's highway access. Soldier Fields Road is three tenths of a mile away. The Mass Pike, one mile away. And there's public transit, the commuter rail. Boston Landing is three tenths of a mile away, and the 86 bus, 190 feet away, Market Street and Centola Street. But there are alternatives. Walking, although not included on our slide, walking is a popular alternative mode of transportation for Alston Brighton residents, especially in densely populated pockets, like Cleveland Circle, where not having a car is a lifestyle choice. Like me, for five of the nine years that I worked for the city of Boston. 
The distance from our proposed location to key areas in Brighton, Brighton Center is eight tenths of a mile away. Cleveland Circle is 1.2 miles away and Oak Square is 1.5 miles away. Most important, Castle Leaf is an accessible, walkable stop from neighborhood destination points. As more cannabis stores open in neighborhood settings across Boston, Watertown, Cambridge, and Somerville, cannabis purchased as a destination point like Netta and Brookline pre-COVID is becoming a thing of the past in favor of purchase while out and about, running errands, doing work or social activity, dining, exercising, shopping, appointments, entertainment. So the distance from our proposed location to neighborhood destinations are within a half mile. The Stockyard restaurant is one tenth of a mile away. Guest Street parking garage, two tenths of a mile away. The New Balance to Development and Rail Stop restaurant is four tenths of a mile away. There's a proposed shuttle service from the Guest Street parking garage, designated ride share drop off, and dedicated on site bike parking. Next slide, please. Our seed to sale tracking system will ensure all products are always accounted for, a fundamental requirement of the Cannabis Control Commission. Product will be kept behind a secure locked counter and stored in a limited access vault. We will have educational literature that we provide to every single customer on the safe storage of cannabis and reinforce the dangers of distribution to and use by minors. All customers enter through a secure vestibule. Entry is only granted to people over 21 years of age with proper identification. Another fundamental requirement of the Cannabis Control Commission, and there are no exceptions. Each customer will again have their IDs checked by a trained security associate who will utilize advanced ID science scanners. Additionally, all customers will be required to clear a second ID verification at checkout prior to purchase. Castle Leaf will have an absolute zero tolerance policy for causing a nuisance, any disruptive behavior on or on site con consumption. Any customer found consuming products on site or in the surrounding area, including Portsmouth Park, will be documented and permanently banned. That is banned for life from Castle Leaf. Castle Leaf will maintain a full complement of security personnel to monitor the site and conduct routine perimeter sweeps. And we are leveraging proven best in class tobacco prevention policies. No single pre rolls will be sold. All pre rolls will be sold in packs as required by the City of Boston ordinance. Next slide, please. Castle Leaf's focus on community begins with a local hiring preference. Our comprehensive store opening plan starts with our commitment to hire locally, not just Boston local, hiring employees from right here in Alston Brighton. Community is the most important aspect of our business. You will see us often beginning with providing residents information and education about our retail operations in individual or group settings, as many as needed. Once we are open, we look forward to conducting quarterly community meetings to ensure continuous and consistent communications and hearing your feedback. In fact, once we receive final approval from the city of Boston, we would be happy to schedule an informational seminar where we cover the cannabis industry and the types of jobs we will be making available. For now, and as we settle in, my number and email address are available at the end of this presentation. However, in the future, a phone number for neighborhood or community concerns will be posted on Castle Leaf's front door with calls directed to retail management. But please do not discard my number because I am here to answer your questions and concerns, and I look forward to talking most any time, especially as COVID subsides and meeting for coffee or a scone is involved, or perhaps French fries or Chardonnay. I can go either way. We look forward to your advice and assistance identifying potential local organizations and nonprofits with whom we can partner to provide resources for the Brighton Alston neighborhood. And we will, we will be meeting with established community groups, ACA, BAIA, and BACC with rotating listening sessions to elicit comment, feedback, and ideas on how we can best serve you, the Alston Brighton community, as well as our immediate neighbors and abutters. Next slide, please. 
In closing, tonight is not about the merits of recreational cannabis legalization. That has already been decided and decided overwhelmingly by Brighton voters in 2016. Ward 21, 76.8% of the voters voted yes. Ward 22, 70.6% of the voters voted yes. The highest vote totals in the state. At least 52 cannabis retail stores resided within the city of Boston, anywhere from five to six right here in Alston Brighton. Next slide, please. As Jonathan said best at the start of this meeting, who does Alston Brighton want to have as a neighbor and who do you want to partner with? I believe Castle with our deep community ties, diverse and rich experience and established commercial location, give us the best chance to serve this community with the least risk of disruption and the great ability to ensure true benefits for Brighton for our community. I ask for your support. I am excited by what this project could mean for our neighborhood. With that, I will turn this back to Jonathan and Connor to solicit questions from all of you. Thank you so very much for being here this evening. Great, thank you guys. Uh, before we, we go over to the question and answer portion, uh, three things I just wanna bring up. Um, first off, wanna recognize we have representatives from uh, State Rep Moran's office, Jen Migliori, uh, State Rep Kevin Honan's office, Oscar Lopez, and District Counselor Liz Braden, represented by Pam Mullaney. Uh, they're on as well. Um, just before we get into questions and comments, as I said earlier, please be respectful. If, if someone disagrees with you, you know, that's perfectly fine. You're addressing questions and comments to me and the applicant, be respectful as well that I ask. And then if uh, you don't want to verbally ask a question, there's the chat bar below. You can also send a question to me that way. Uh, if you take the time to look below, you have these ellipses, more options. You can raise your hand digitally and I can call upon you. After I've called upon you, please lower your hand. That allows me to make sure that I can call on more folks effectively and we can use our time. And then also I have, um, what else was I about to say? I apologize, I lost my train of thought. Um, yes, so if you are calling in, we, I see a number of callers. Feel free to reach out to my office tomorrow. We can make this presentation available to you either electronically or we'll try to find a way to get a paper copy. And you can also raise your hand on the phone. If you hit star three, that'll also digitally raise your hand and I can call upon you as well. All right, so without further ado, we've got a couple of hands raised right now. I'm gonna call upon Mike first. Mike, go ahead. And before Mike starts, I'm sorry to cut you off there, Mike. I just wanna mark for the record that we have 138 attendees in the uh, meeting now. Um, yes, thank sorry you. Sorry about that. Yep. Mike, go ahead. You're unmuted. Mike, I'm not hearing you. All right. Mike will return to you. And you're back on. Bernadette Lally. Bird, go ahead. Hi. Um I live in Lower Alston, um, and I haven't been a big supporter of the um, cannabis um, people who have come before our neighborhood. Um, I do have to say I appreciate that you guys have off-street parking, which seems to be unheard of in these other ones. Um, I like your plan. I like where the building is located. Um, I think... I, I did vote for marijuana to have it legalized, so I am one of those people. Um, but I didn't, I don't appreciate a lot of the, the ones that have come before us. This one seems to be well thought out. Um, that building has been kind of hideous with that parking lot. So I'm glad you're going to do some um, improvements on that. And I like the idea of murals and, and, um, and plantings along the street. Um, I will warn you that the traffic on that street at 5 o'clock is horrendous. Um, I heard that the city is going to make it a two way street again, which it was years ago. Um, that might be helpful. <laughs> um, I know Portsmouth Park is close, um, but not as close as, as the location of the other 1 at the end of Lincoln Street. 
with all the schools. So I appreciate this is further away. Um, I wish you luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you so much. And Bernard, I, just, I will lower Sorry. your hand as well. Lower, yeah, if you could just lower your hand for me, that'd be helpful. How do I do that? Uh, it's just, just like raising your hand just should be an option. Bernadette, great to see you. Thanks for coming. All right. Mike, I'm going to circle back to you real quick. Mike, you're on. Can you hear me now? We can, Mike. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, I recently watched a BCC meeting, the Boston Cannabis Bureau, and uh, it was interesting that uh, one of the board members implied that uh, traffic issues are not my backyard issues. I was very surprised. But as you know, Connor, long before you even you became the uh, the, the association, the uh, representative here. We've been having traffic issues forever, and um, this is because basically the unique structure of the local resident street, neighborhood street, and the and the Lincoln Street, which is the collector row, designed to have higher um, capacity, and it's 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 a it's a way to get to um, uh, I ninety. And um, the AB mobile, there were many studies, and and the studies all say that we have an is we have issues that never been solved. The 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 BPDA AB mobility study, uh, um, confer is one of the confirming ones. They had a they had a meeting a couple of months ago, and um, Galaxy was invited. It was for their street, right on where the uh, the building is, and they didn't come. You know, so much for the neighborhood concern. Uh, different, different during that meeting, different opinions were given, but the consensus was we have a major traffic safety, volume, parking, and speed issue. No matter what side you on of the proposal that was given, the, the consensus was we that one block, all of Lincoln Street, but especially between Leo and Bermian Parkway and Parsons Street, has major issues. So I, 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 I'll Connor, I ask you a question. We, at the BCB meeting, uh, I understand you give a summary of this meeting to them, is that correct? So no, typically I'll, I'll mention, you know, if there were some concerns that we heard of, um, but mostly it's to render our opinion and render what community support or community opposition we've heard. Okay, so you, you so my, my another question was, uh, you're not going to tell them that, are you going to tell them we have long-standing issues long before you became the liaisons? And, 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 you know, we get promises once in a while, but nothing has been done and it's getting worse. So you're not going to mention that to them or? Mike, you're asking me about something that's going to occur months from now. You know, okay. I, I think if I hear from a number of residents that, hey, we're concerned about the impact on traffic, then I will mention that. Okay. All right, I, I would like to go on that, even though it's been confirmed by the city and the Boston Traffic Department. Uh, Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Another, another uh, the direct butter zone uh, area. Um, the number of butters is very limited. It's mainly the mass pipe, the commuter rail, the back of buildings on Guest Street, uh, um, and a large part of Postman Street Park. And um, I've been doing a little research. Some of it's been outdated, but the earlier research for medical marijuana was that if you're inside the buffer, which which most of with a large part of Parkman Street Park is, uh, if you have K to 12 activities, it doesn't have to be school activities supported and and, and monitored by somebody from the school, uh, it is disallowed. Now that has been removed for some reason, but it, the intent was is a good intent for the safety, and we do have the soccer team come out, you know, during the fall and we have other teams come out and they're, and they're monitored by by the coach from the high school. So that's that's an issue there. And plus, there's a lot of issues with Boston Street Park, which I'm sure um, other will uh, other will indicate. Now, I have a question uh, on the security cameras in the park. Uh, are we turning into a, a, a police state? What do they monitor and what is the purpose and what, if any, action will be taken? Mass does not even have red light cameras uh, in our area. 
in, in the public area, and, and they're uh, expecting to have a, a cam camera, security cameras in a public playground with young children. Uh, um, would cannabis leaf please reply about their, their comment, my comment uh, about the uh, what they plan to do with these uh, security cameras, which which is kind of strange considering you know you have young children there, and you're not allowed to take pictures of young children. And what's going to happen? Great, thanks, Mike. Well, Juan, if you could address that, you. please. Thank you, Mike, for your question. It is really a great question, and the idea of children being around cannabis is of concern. So thank you for that. Um, with uh, as far as I, my understanding of the idea of security cameras, really has more to do with. The, with Castle Leaf working with the community to come up with ideas that will mitigate anybody going into the park and actually using marijuana that's coming from our store. It's not, it has not been settled. And frankly, what I've understood it to be is an idea that it hasn't even been worked through. We haven't met with you. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting with you yet. And so we will sit down. That is exactly why I'd love to sit down with you and with other folks in Portsmouth and to discuss what you guys think would work, because I agree with you about cameras that you have to use that very sparingly. But there may be other things that we can come up with collectively that could begin to mitigate some of the concerns people have with people using cannabis in Portsmouth Park. I am available at any point, at any time, and Connor can give you more information. Um, and I'd love to sit with you and your neighbors and um, colleagues in the Portsmouth area to talk about what we can do. And we will be a firm supporter also with the traffic of working with you and helping the city come up with ideas of how we can mitigate the traffic impacts just at this um, on the street. Great, thanks, Tuan. Up next, we have Yvette. Yvette, I'm gonna unmute you now. Yvette, go ahead. Hello? She just disappeared. All right. Edward, I see we have a question. Oh, all right, no, so I have a, a message, a question from the question bar. Um, parking, the plan calls, hold on a second. Yvette, you're unmuted. Please go ahead. Yeah, you just unmuted me. Thank you. Sorry. Um, and then question those questions are my questions, Connor, so you can ignore. Um, um, thank you for presenting today. Um, I do see that, you know, this seems to be a much more responsible plan around the operating model, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that being said, the picture posted here must have been taken during the weekend when everybody was away because there is not that much parking on that. Street, so that's first for comment. I think your plan calls for five to 50 employees. And again, I think the big issue around here has been parking, particularly with respect to the buildings going up. Um, Santander, there's a proposal there. There's another building going up there. And a lot of the residents in those buildings are parking in the, the parking lot for now, but it's going to become a very bigger issue for this neighborhood. And I'm a street or two back from this or when you're proposing to offer this. And my biggest concern definitely about traffic and definitely around the parking situation, especially when you plan to have that many employees. So the logistics of this to me um, and the building doesn't make much sense, but I don't know the intention here. And I think that could be solved for at least communicated to us as residents first prior to any prior, you know, prior to any approval, because I think that is gonna be what really causes the community to feel um, very, uh, you know, uh, uptight about something like this going. It doesn't matter that it's cannabis or anything. I, I don't feel like the location can support the magnitude of people that they can draw, plus your employees, plus everything else going on around here. So, so that would be my my biggest concern. And I I echo what Mike said previously, which is there is a K through 12 school down the street within a mile. And again, I'm I'm after the 2016 vote in Brighton or else probably 
um, probably wouldn't have been so uh, enthusiastic about something like this becoming part of a local neighborhood. And we have a lot of people who ride bikes with their kids coming down the street, et cetera. So, so again, and I, I get more concerned about the kids and the proximity of this to the schools, even though that's not at the other part of Austin, uh, it's on my part of up, up here. So I, I'm just concerned about those things and, and what's the intention about doing some sort of a traffic type of uh, study to then address what the capacity planning has to constitute in order to make something like this become reality. Thank you Yvette, for the question. Um, I, as I said earlier, I live in Cleveland Circle, so I too understand the parking issues. And for this reason, I'm going to ask Jay Yeomans to um, take this question to kind of explain the thoughts behind pro um, parking. Jay? Yeah, thank you, Duan, and, and thank you so much for the question. Um, I live just a, a short uh, half mile from this site, so I definitely appreciate your concerns and, and the question. Uh, a few things. One, um, we will be uh, ensuring that all employee parking is on the other side of the Mass Pike in rented spaces um, to the extent that there are employees that use um, uh, vehicles. Uh, we uh, are going to be implementing a robust alternative uh, kind of transportation modality program for our employees where there'll be perks benefits to using public transportation, including uh, uh, subsidized uh, uh, MBTA passes. Um, as you know, uh, there is a brand new commuter rail station that I understand is not being utilized as much as uh, it had been hoped. And so we definitely hope to contribute to seeing the ridership increase. Um, so just to just want to make sure I underscore that no employee parking will be on site uh, or using other publicly available spots on that street or the surrounding area. We will be to the extent people are using vehicles. We will rent dedicated spots off site where people can walk in uh, and we will be encouraging uh, in all cases alternative means to um, to come there, which is one of the reasons why we're so excited about our Alston Brighton resident priority priority for hiring. We really want to see people walking to work, being able to ride their bike to work. Um, we will also be looking at blue bike stations and other things again to increase utilization by our employees and our customers. In terms of Parking uh, for customers, I would just say that I, I am unaware of any proposed or uh, approved um, cannabis retail site uh, in Boston, with maybe the exception of a couple over near Logan Airport, right on the um, kind of Revere, uh, kind of Winthrop side, um, that have parking of this magnitude. Um, uh, we're looking at over 20 spaces between the front and the back that will be available and dedicated to customers, solely customers, um, and very sensitive to uh, obviously rush hour traffic. We took the time to look at existing traffic studies that were conducted, uh, including at the nearby uh, parcel right across from us on Link at the end of Lincoln Street. So we're well aware of very recent pre-COVID analyses on traffic. Um, and we are taking that into consideration with our 10 a.m. start time. Uh, the traffic studies uh, show that rush hour is the is the issue. Um, so by opening at 10, we're avoiding the morning rush. Uh, we are also committed to uh, appointment only for our initial launch. And depending on how that launch uh, kind of data shows, we'd be open to potentially looking at appointment only to be deployed uh, during the evening rush hour as well. Uh, a lot of these things are going to be dynamic and kind of what, what's great, and Michelle can comment on this more with our utilization of technology, is that we can adjust to appointment only on the fly. And if there's anything that Michelle, I think, really has mastered throughout COVID is how to adapt to an ever-changing environment, whether it's regulatory environment, or um, you know, uh, a crush of uh, uh, consumers or a, <laughs> a dearth of them. So um, <laughs> Michelle, Michelle really has mastered that 
Michelle, I don't know if you want to comment more on that, and then I would like to go back and address uh, a few things about the concern related to adolescence, uh, cannabis use, and proximity. I'd like to I'd like to address that. But anything, Michelle, you would add to the transportation piece here? Um, nothing that I would add. I think I think Jay, you kind of hit on everything, but just just reiterate that you know, as far as the appointments go, that's something that we can absolutely. And I have uh, implemented within like a day or two <laughs> during COVID. So um, it's very easy to do, very easy to stand up, but also that, you know, that's, you know, not being able to find parking and congestion is something that we don't want just as much as the neighborhood doesn't want. It's not good for business. It's not good for our customers. Um, so we are absolutely aligned with you on that. The other thing we'll be doing, um, yeah, I should have mentioned this earlier, is uh, we're going to be looking at a shuttle service. Um, so we'll be looking at uh, potentially contracting with a neighboring parking lot across the pike there uh, and running uh, shuttle service uh, in, you know, 30, 30 minute intervals. Again, I think it's going to be uh, important for us to really get a sense during that opening of demand. Um, this site very much is designed to be a community. Um, neighborhood business. Um, I think with the multitude of retail sites that will be opening prior to this, including in Chestnut Hill, Fenway Park, um, Back Bay, right on uh, Boylston Street, uh, North Station, one in Watertown, you're going to see a lot of others that are frankly more convenient for uh, kind of the destination seeker. Um, I just think that this is really going to be uh, one that's very local and uh, used by folks that um, are are working and or uh, living in the direct vicinity. So, um, but anyway, I wanted to add the shuttle piece. In terms of adolescents and kids, um, I definitely take. I think we all take that. I'm a father of a four year old. I know uh, Dave has kids, uh, as does Michael, and. Um, I think that this is something that is really important for us to focus on. And I guess I would just remind folks that today, uh, adolescents have zero uh, trouble getting access to illicit drugs. Um, you can go to any school and uh, it doesn't matter if it's in Brookline or in Boston. It doesn't matter if it's in Lexington or in Brockton, you will find uh, plenty of drugs in those and around those vicinities. And so we really view our role as actually putting drug dealers out of business. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a highly secure location that uh, respects the community and uh, uh, has actually higher security protocols than financial institutions. There will be no minors ever allowed into this building. Um, we will also have uh, security that will do perimeter sweeps and kind of close neighborhood sweeps to make sure that you don't see someone coming in, purchasing and walking out and having fun with the friends. We're also not going to be selling products that are at a price point that they can make purchases. So that's one of the reasons we've dedicated ourselves to packaging uh, uh, pre-rolls and not selling individual individual joints. Um, that is a big draw, obviously, for folks who want to walk in, spend $15, walk out. They can't do that here. They're going to have to spend $45 or $50 to even purchase any of our products. So we're we're being very purposeful about the kind of customer we're seeking. Um, and then I guess the last thing I would just say is um, that these retail sites uh, materially reduce overall crime. Uh, and I can send anyone who's interested many studies, um, University of Texas, UCLA, University of Virginia, uh, University of Wisconsin, and they all show decreases by as much as 20% uh, of crime within the half mile radius of these. We also see a decrease in uh, adolescent utilization of cannabis in the direct vicinity, and they actually see an 8% increase in property value. I saw that that was a question in the chat. Uh, University of Wisconsin Business School did a study that showed within a half mile of a retail facility with the kind of security and infrastructure that we're talking about here that on average, the uh, prices went up for, for um, properties by 8%. So it has a bit of like the Trader Joe's. They equate it in the study to like the Trader Joe's effect or the Whole Foods effect. 
So happy to send that site to you as well. But um, let me just say that we absolutely are dedicated to this. And that's why we will have our community forums every quarter to hear from you and to make adjustments so that we're taking those things into consideration. So do you want anything I missed that you want to add? No, that was very thorough. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. That was, that was the next question I was, I was going to call on or bring up. Um, so we'll move ahead. Sal, and please, folks, if you've raised your hand and I've called on you, please lower that because if you have an additional question, I, I can't tell if you just left it on or if uh, you have a new thought. So, Sal, you're unmuted if you want to go ahead. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Sal. All right. So I got a little bit of a list. And then maybe afterwards you can give me some answers or your input from all you guys up there. So, Duan, you mentioned once in a lifetime chance for your family. What about for our families? We're trying to protect that community, our children in the community, right? Failure on war on drugs, you mentioned. I say never give up. It's too important. Drug addiction you see every day it is put to us. And I don't think that this helps it. You don't mention anything about health concerns. The CDC, the Surgeon General has a lot of concerns Sal, on that. Yep. No, Sal, I, I understand. Yep. It's it's gotta be focused on the location. It can't be on. I can't be talking right. about CDC stuff or health impacts. Right. That's that's not what this conversation is about. So please talk about specific issues you have with the right. site. Okay. So traffic getting to that site. Lincoln Street is one way at that end. So you have to filter through the neighborhood to get to the your parking lot. You're not gonna go down a one way street. You have no entrance on Leo Birmingham Parkway. You talk about shuttles, they still have to go through the neighborhood to get to your site. That intersection is very busy during the day, especially at rush hours, but during the day. Anybody who lives in the neighborhood knows how busy it is. You have homes right across the street, 30 feet across from your entrance. You have homes there. You never mentioned those people. 60 units being built right on the corner of condos. Never mentioned that. You talk about how it's on the pike, it's a fortress. Other people mentioned how it's away from the community. You're right across the street from homes, if, you, if nobody noticed. What about the, you mentioned the BAIA approval before. What about they approved Cleveland Circle, Brighton Center, North Beacon Street. How many more do we need in this area? Uh, a lot of people in this community have lived here a long time. It sounds like a great opportunity to make money for you guys. We're not looking at it as a way to make money. We don't look at, you know, putting our hand out looking for community benefits with the downside, I think that it's a downside to our community. We have children walking down that street. You mentioned Portsmouth Street Playground, which is 80 feet away. You talked about, you mentioned cameras, putting cameras in that park so nobody would be using it, right? But then you mentioned a little bit later when somebody raised the question that, yeah, having cameras is a big problem because you can't be taking pictures of people, but you didn't have any other solutions ready as far as protecting people from using it. You, somebody mentioned on your board there about sweeps through the neighborhood to make sure people aren't using. That would be very limited. And why do we need people filtering through our neighborhood looking for people smoking marijuana? You're going to be keeping an eye on everybody? I don't believe that. Uh, so, Jay, I think you mentioned, you talked a little bit about, you know, you have kids and other people on the board have kids. And that, you know, it's a big concern to you, but you don't live in this neighborhood. You know, and I don't know how you would react if somebody was proposing to have a cannabis store for adult use. We're not talking about, you know, 
I, I showed up and supported uh, I showed up and supported the Cleveland Circle uh, address, which is two blocks from mine. So um, yeah. I'm on I'm on record supporting it. But thank you. Right. And was that approved? Yes, it was. Okay. So putting drug dealers out of business? I don't think so. I think it's a great business opportunity for you guys. It's a big cash cow. Our neighborhood has fought for a lot of things over the years. People have put in so much time to make it a better community. I don't think I ever saw the owner of uh, of this business galaxy ever there. You know, the parking lot in this picture, the rendering looks better. I don't know why it was never done before. As far as, you know, being such a great, uh, security expert you can never keep graffiti people from writing on the side of your building so i have a big concern with this project somebody else actually uh, a resident from alston mentioned about how they liked it they liked the the location you know it was for it was wasn't as close to the school as the one down the other end of lincoln street Actually, this is very close to the school Vinfen. It's probably three, four hundred feet away, Vinfen on Leo Birmingham Parkway, right? That's a school that serves uh, challenged people. So I didn't go and support one in Cleveland Circle because I didn't live there. If one was in Oak Square, if Juan, if you were proposing in an Oak Square, you'd probably have a lot of your friends being against it. But when it's on this side of the pike, I think it's more acceptable. And I have a problem with that because we live here and we lived here for many years. Great. Thank, thank you, Sal. Juan, I'm going to turn over to you if there's anything you want to address. Yes. Yes, I do. And thank you, Sal, for the question. Um, I want to just start with the once in a lifetime opportunity and kind of explain a little bit what that means to me. And basically, this is an opportunity of a brand new industry that, as you said, it is very robust at this point. And it may be, if not the leading growing industry in the United States, it's close to it. And it's important for people like us in working class areas and normal people to have access to what this industry can be. And I'm really committed to that. The idea that this industry is only going to be for people who are rich and not of communities. I think we want to let folks have a choice whether they want to be involved. Everyone is not interested in cannabis cell and I absolutely understand that. Um, there's a great stigma surrounding it. But for those people who know nothing about it, because it's such a new and vibrant industry, and they have no idea what it can be or what jobs could be available as it grows and what it can turn into, and to discard it and not have the opportunity to at least find out, I think is a travesty. This could be like computers. I wouldn't have thought years ago that a telephone would be a computer in my pocket. I was from the, when they dialed phones. That was when I was a kid. So this is more the economic mobility and the economic engine that cannabis can have in a community is really important. And I understand everyone may not be on board, but what about those people who, for whom this is an opportunity to change their lives? Do we really want to, them not to have that? And that's where I am. And so that's what I, I meant about once in a lifetime opportunity because you don't have industries like this come along every day, that this a, a, there's a certain window to get in and learn these skills that are then marketable anywhere cannabis opens up across the nation. When you learn how to run a retail store, you know how to run a retail store. Michelle can tell you the difficulty of that. But when you learn those skills, that you can go anywhere, you can demand higher wages. This is a new industry, and it's just allowing people to make the choices for themselves. Everyone, I'm not saying everyone should do that. So that was my position and I stand by it in the sense that I do want younger folks who with jobs to have an opportunity to get into a career 
and to learn and become leaders in a new industry and use the creativity for what can cannabis can be 10 or 15 years from now. This is just the beginning with this. And I also think a lot of times with health, we don't know things haven't been studied in cannabis. It's been illegal. So this is a great opportunity for some people, not everyone, but for some people. Castle Leaf will make every effort to be respectful of the community to ensure we're not forcing anyone to do this. We <laughs> certainly not. And we will be very respectful for people for whom this isn't their choice. We understand that. So we will work with you. I am happy to sit down and talk with you. You know, and because this is time, this is not something that happens overnight for anybody, that it's going to take time for all of us to get acclimated to this new world that we're in. But I am happy to be here, and I think our entire team, frankly, um, to answer any questions and to be in the community and working just as collaboratively with people who are not necessarily fans of cannabis as we are for people who want to go into cannabis. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, and, and Juan, let me just add very quickly. I just want to say, um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I was the senior advisor to the state public health commissioner. Um, I take drug addiction really seriously since my dad overdosed. Um, and uh, thank God there are things like uh, Narcan and uh, uh, hospitals like uh, St. Elizabeth that save people like my father because he ended up being a very productive citizen. I wish that... Uh, uh, I wish there were options like cannabis to help him with his uh, post-traumatic stress um, and, uh, rather than uh, the drugs that he turned to. And I will just tell you that that's backed by data. So if we're going to talk about data, I would welcome you to look at, well, any study that's ever looked at this that shows a material decrease. So uh, we take that seriously. I wouldn't represent a company like Castle Leaf, uh, given my history. Uh, if we're Jay, Jay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off, and I, I know this is, and thank you for sharing a, about your father. We, should, we can, we're kind of getting more into the morality and, and the, the yeah. health side of things, which is we need to be focused on questions regarding that's you know, fair. traffic path that these shuttle buses will take. You know, if, if there's something that you guys can speak to on that, or if that's a conversation you can have further down the line with residents, I think that's what we're interested in hearing. Yeah, Connor, I just, I just, I just want to make sure that everyone on this phone. I just don't like it when people insinuate that people on the, the panelists don't care about these issues. We do. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. So thank you, Connor. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, so jumping on, we had a question in the chat, question and comment. We, we've got a lot of people with hands raised, so I'm, I'm trying to get to everybody. So if we could all, you know, if you could speak concisely, both. You know, the panelists, myself, and uh, people, um, residents. So, question Can you provide curbside delivery? So, I'm going to throw this to Michelle about where the regulations stand with curbside delivery. Um, yeah, so we can offer express pickup, um, which we will inside. Uh, we actually can't offer technically uh, curbside because it is a public sidewalk and we, we're not allowed to transact on a public sidewalk, um, but we, we, we can and we will offer express inside. Great. And then I'll, I'll be going back and forth between Q and A and, and hands raised. Uh, Dan Daly, you're up next. Dan, go ahead, please. Okay. Dan, you're on. Okay. Dan? Yes. Yep. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, speaking on behalf of the uh, BAIA, um, this presentation came as many presentations have come um, in the last couple of years, and um, this is uh, a local, a truly locally uh, sponsored group. And um, this is one of two locations that we have approved, the other one being up in Cleveland Circle. No other presentations have been approved. There's been many in Brighton Center, Oak Square, and all throughout the Austin Brighton neighborhood. But um, this actually passed our neighborhood approval. So I want to go on record on saying that. And um, I, I wish the best for this group. I really want to. 
they want to um, um, be a part of this neighborhood, and they have been for many years living here and, and working here. So uh, I want to go on record and support. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. All right, going quickly. Chris Sullivan. Chris, you're up. Hey, I have lived and worked in the Alton Brighton community for many years. Uh, my mother grew up here. Um, was seen many presentations, and this by far has been the best yet. Um, you know, having the off street parking is great. Um, I think the shuttle being a great option doesn't necessarily have to go through the neighborhood. Could pick a drop off location in an area that's close. Um, so I really believe this is one of the best locations and would like to offer my support. Great. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have another comment. I'm going to read off. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us. A young professional in the Alston Brighton uh, for over 10 years. I think this is something we should not only take a chance on, but something we can be proud of. If not this company, then who? We need this sense of community pride from the well thought out parking plan, 10 a.m. start time, 9 p.m. closing time, to the opportunity to brighten up the street with local artists. I wish you the best. Daniel, uh -huh. all right. Hold my hand. I got you muted. Yeah, if you can lower your hand, please. Um, Chris, I already called on you. Joanne, Joanne, go ahead. Hi, good evening, Joanne Del Como. Um, my concern is the traffic and congestion. I go by that site uh, frequently, and so I have a few questions. Um, uh, what is the customer capacity that can be in the site at any one time? Okay, uh, Michelle, I think. With the square footage, I'm. Yeah, the square footage is uh, Michael, I believe it's what 30, 3500 square feet in the uh, retail setting downstairs. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so we anticipate that we're going to be able to um, uh, contain all uh, queuing to the extent. No, I understand that. I'm just asking for customer capacity. In other words. You know, at a given time, how many customers would be the capacity in the uh, building? Yep. Um, so taking out employees, I would expect that we could have up to about 60 customers at any one time. But okay. I, I want to put a big asterisk next to that because we will have only the amount of customers allowed in that uh, building as we believe, number one, parking spots support, and number two, ensure we never have a line out the door. So if we feel like we're seeing people trying to get in the parking lot, there's not parking spaces. We feel like if there's a line starting to form out the door, by the way, both of these th situations have not even happened in the existing four open Boston locations, but if they were to happen here, um, that would be a cause for us to move to appointment only as a protocol and limit who can come into the store. And would that be as part of your license? Or are you just that's saying, are, are you saying, are, are you saying you'd make that a condition of your license that even though the capacity would be 60, if you start to see that it's getting crowded, that you would go to move to appointment only, or is this just what your plan is? Um, this is this is our existing protocol that professionals on this phone have already uh, implemented okay. over six right. years of locations. Okay. Um, and what does your business plan or what your projections show are going to be the average number of customers served Monday through Saturday? I'm not asking about Sunday because that's shorter hours. I would. I would, I would think we have to actually get a feel for what the business will look like. This is a brand new location in a new area. A lot of new cannabis companies are opening. I'm not sure there's a way we can predict and which is why we're taking a cautious approach of starting with appointment only and really seeing what it looks like and what our business looks like. But in, so your, business plan, can... in your business plan, didn't you make projections about how many customers customers on an average basis daily that you would have? I mean, I can't imagine it. 
So I guess I would, uh, to answer that question, I don't have the business plan in front of me, so I apologize that I can't answer that uh, is exactly the way you're, you're you, you know, I know you're asking. What I can tell you is that it's a moving target. Remember, this project was uh, came before the BAIA almost a year and a half ago. That was a very different market that that proposal was being proposed within, right? It's now a year and a half later. There's been um, over 20 licenses approved by the city of Boston. There have been four licenses in Watertown approved. There have been six licenses in Brookline approved, many of which are now open. Um, uh, Somerville's now opening. Cambridge is starting to move towards maybe three opening. So the situation has dramatically shifted from a year and a half ago where I would have been telling you that I think this would be a wildly successful business and that maybe some of these concerns about lines could be justified. I'm telling you right now that based on the current market with already four open in Boston, that there are that there are no lines or traffic that have created any issues. Uh, that's at Blue Hill Ave, Meridian Street, North Station, and Milk Street. No issues. So um, I, I, I can get back to you on specific number of customers based on our updated plan, but I would expect this to be a trickle, not a stream in terms of what you would see in activity. Great. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Joanne. That's a conversation we continue to have, but I'm, I'm trying to move quickly through these comments. Uh, Mark Hughes, you're up next. Mark. Uh, hi. So I uh, grew up in, in Brighton and I'm a medical patient and I'm close to Brighton Center. Um, I like the location because it's easy for me to access to, whereas like um, for other dispensaries where if I wanted to go to a different one, usually I'd go to either Sierra, which is in Somerville, or maybe Garden Remedies in Newton or Ethos in Watertown. And um, with a lot of people talking about the traffic going to any of those locations, I also have to drive through Market Street. But with this location, it's uh, close to me, so I can actually bike to it or walk to it if I want to. Um, I also think the location is good because, uh, I mean, people were saying that it's sort of like close to residential areas, but compared to almost anywhere else in Brighton, it's uh, a lot more commercialized than other areas. Um, I'm also like pretty young. I'm in my mid twenties and uh, with everyone talking about it being you know, somewhat close to schools, I don't think that would have an effect on the, you know, children's ability to have access to this, uh, especially like at a high school level, like no children are really getting drugs from dispensaries. They're getting them from their peers. Um, and also with marijuana, I like, it's a lot more regulated than, you know, say, an alcohol store or like a corner store that sells alcohol and so it would be a lot more harder for anyone who who uh, isn't supposed to have access it to get it um yeah i think that's pretty much all i have to say great thank you mark thank you all right kelly you're up next oh geez hi hello. kelly i'm oh, sorry i'm hi how are you can you hear me Yes, we can. Okay, because I'm driving, so sorry. Um, I just wanted to say that I am in support of this location. I think that compared to all the other ones that I've heard, um, this is the first. Sorry, Kelly, you're, you're cutting out a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I just want to say that um, I like this location, especially for the parking. I think that they have a solid plan um, compared to other you know, proposals that we've heard throughout the community. I mean, I mean it's gonna need to go somewhere, so we're gonna have to compromise on where. I mean, I can understand the people in the direct neighborhood and that yet, you know, having questions and concerns. So, you know, that's their right to do that. Um, I just wanna say that I am in support of this particular location. Great, thank you, Kelly. Thank You're you. Welcome. All right. Calling on the next person, they have a mildly inappropriate name. So, Mr. Head, would you care to comment? You're on, sir. Hello? Hello? Yep, you're on. Can you go ahead with your question or comment? 
Hello. I can circle back to you if we need to. Hello. All righty. Um, reading off a couple in the uh, Q and A section. Sorry, I'm, I'm just scrolling through. While you're doing that, uh, Joanne, I just want you to know I got your uh, message and uh, uh, Duan and I will follow up. Yes, Joanne. Thank you. So, hi, there's no parking on the street. Can you speak to new residences and buildings? So, I know, you know, there's the proposed development um, that's actually under construction, as many of you know, and, and part of Lincoln Street is currently inhibited by uh, Jersey barriers that are in the street to provide pedestrians access. I can take a look at what that BPA, how many units exactly that is. That was something that was approved before I came into my role. So I'm not too familiar with that project versus others where I've been at the start of the community process. Um, I believe there, there's an exit um, at the end of Lincoln Street for that building where cars would flow in on Leo Birmingham and then exit onto Lincoln Street. But I can confirm that and that a lot of that information is available on the BPA website. Um, and then going off of that as well, another resident mentioned, um, you know, they believe that traffic will flow more freely when those Jersey barriers are removed. Um, resident expressing that they're impressed with the team, uh, but they wanted to voice the strong support. Um, with parking being a major concern for residents and neighbors, I think we should be thoughtful to no longer having Galaxy vehicle traffic and foot traffic. Uh, how many gal current Galaxy, excuse me, uh, how many employees are currently employed by Galaxy at this site? And conversely, how many of these employees are daily drivers and commuters? Uh, McD McDade, if you could speak to that, that'd be helpful. Sure, absolutely. Hi. Um, currently is about 60, 65 employees um, out of this office, out of this uh, 100 Leo Birmingham office. And they do drive in and out on a daily basis. We have quite a bit of service vehicles. Um, plus we have staff in the building, probably of about uh, 25, 30 staff members. Um, so there is quite a bit of traffic, meaning, you know, uh, quite a bit of movement. And we, we see the traffic patterns but I, I couldn't see that the newer business would be uh, much different traffic patterns than we have currently. Great, thank you. All right, going back to Mr. Head. Mr. Head, you're unmuted. Hello? Yes, go ahead. I think there's a couple of people I can hear in the background. Do you have your question, comment? All right. David, David Huddleston. Yes, this is David. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hi, so my, my name is David Huddleston and I own a property management company in Boston. Uh, I manage properties all throughout this area, Austin and Brighton. Um, I've spoken with many of my tenants about this proposed location and received like overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelmingly uh, positive responses. Um, I know there's a strong desire within this community for cannabis. Um, given all the positives about the location and the fact that we're going to have these stores in the community regardless, I think this is a no brainer. As a black small business owner, I applaud Duan's efforts on the economic empowerment programs. It's comforting to see representation of this industry from the, uh, the communities that were so negatively affected by cannabis pre legalization. Uh, I just want to say, keep up the hard work, Juan. That's all I want to say. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, thank you, David. All right, Tracy. Tracy, you're up next. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Tracy. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, this is Tracy Wu. I'm the local resident. Um, I have a concern about the, um, the cultural and uh, also the traffic. Uh, we have been fighting for the traffic problems for years. And so far, the city uh, really hasn't, uh, well, we had uh, many meetings, um, but uh, 
nothing has been done yet. Uh, the traffic is really saturated in this neighborhood. Uh, that intersection, that Lincoln Street, uh, Lincoln Street is so busy, and we can't even have a two-way traffic, okay? It's been like this for decades. And it's so saturated during the peak hour, if you look at the traffic, you can back up a couple of blocks. And if you look at intersections in Brighton, this is can, this can be a worse one. If you look at the intersection uh, in the neighboring, just the Leo Birmingham Parkway and the Western Avenue, you don't have to wait many cycles. And this one during the peak hour, two, three cycles is nothing, okay? It's very saturated and uh, the parking on the street already blocked the intersection, you know? Uh, so now you have this business here. I think it's gonna be, uh, nightmare as far as the traffic is concerned. Uh, another thing is the the park. The park is nearby. We have all kinds of groups from daytime to the evening time uh, that people come to use. From toddlers uh, to people with the disabilities and to high school students to the softball teams, you know, basketball teams, whatever. It's just a busy day and a night. Uh, so I already see many people actually smoke marijuana in, in, in the park, okay? Sometimes after dark, you know, uh, we already called the police many times. Um, so this shop here is gonna be too convenient. And uh, uh, also, uh, I feel cultural wise, uh, it's not good for the neighborhood. Now, this neighborhood compared to the other side of the neighborhood is kind of a different, okay? Economic wise, you know, financial wise, uh, education wise, uh, if you look at it, we have a more minorities, you know, we have a more these people with, a, you know, I mean, dis disadvantages. Um, so I I have a little bit of comments I, uh, about the BAIA. I know it's being approved by them, but the BAIA board members, if you look at it, I don't think anyone is from this neighborhood. So, uh, so I don't know when they approved this location, I just feel this location becomes a dumping ground, okay? The traffic issues we haven't resolved, and you can increase a lot of more traffics, you know. And also, we have a lot of new buildings in the surrounding areas, so this is going to be really a nightmare, uh, you know, I mean, to the local residents. So I strongly against this, you know, uh, uh, this store, and I, um, you know, the marijuana stores. I know some people like marijuana stores. Um, but I think we should really think about the location. We have another one I heard uh, that was approved already in the beginning of the Lincoln Street, okay? Now this one is at the end of the Lincoln Street. So you talk about the Lincoln Street will have two marijuana shops, okay? So I just feel, uh, uh, I think, you know, this, uh, it's a too much advantage to take uh, to this neighborhood. So uh, I, I, I'm not happy uh, for the situation that this marijuana shop will be here. Uh, so you really have to think about, you know, the local residents. I know a lot of people support uh, this. But do they live here? Okay. Do they know the culture of this neighborhood? You know, um, so thank you, you thank you, Tracy. Thank we're, you. We're running out, we're running out of time, but you you've made your opposition apparent. And you you brought up issues and concerns yeah. regarding thank proximity you. to the park and traffic. So we hear yeah. you on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right. Up next, Michael. Hey, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, we can, Michael. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I, most of what I was going to say has already been covered, but. Just wanted to reiterate a couple points. I lived in Alston for uh, six years and have listened to a bunch of these 
presentations and as uh, I think it was Chris earlier who said, I haven't really been all that impressed by anyone to date. Um, uh, and th this was the best one I've seen bar none. As it relates to the location, uh, I think, you know, it, the, the fact that it abuts the Mass Pike, it has on-site parking. I think there are parking garages across the bridge. I think it's on Guest Street. I'm not, you know, I'm not really sure what more, what else more we could ask for from a, from a location standpoint. So just wanted to, to voice my support for this team and uh, thank everyone for the time. Great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. All right. John Bly, you're up. Hi, right, thank you. Uh, I just want to say that um, I'm on the BAIA. I'm also a resident. Um, and I, I also worked on the IAG for the building next door to there. So I, I understand the area pretty well. But I'm also looking at all the all the different groups that have come forward so far. And by far this one checks most of the boxes with the parking, with uh, you know, especially somebody that I know that's been involved in our community for years outside of this business already, who understands our community and you know, I think we'll be uh, willing to answer the phone and help us whenever we're having issues with it, which I think is one of the most important um, things that, that comes along with this this proposal. So um, out of all of them I've seen, this is the best one. Uh, I'm in favor and I, I hope for the best for them. And uh, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that they will keep their word and, and be as active and 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 forthcoming with the neighborhood, which I, I know they will, and I'm, I'm happy for them. Thank you. Great, thank you, Thank John. you. All right, I'm trying to move through. We've got a lot of hands here. So, like I said, people can be concise. Uh, Minor, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Connor. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the mayor of Boston for allowing the community to be part of the process. I like, I am the senior regional manager for the Carpenters Union. For the Carpenters Union, and I want to go on record of support of Castle Leaf and the proposal. Uh, and kudos to the team for a great presentation. Great, thank you, Miner. Thank you. All right, Justin Banks. Justin, you're up. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, Justin. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, thank you all for hearing me. I, I was, I worked in the, the neighborhood actually right down the street on uh, Harvard Ave for 10 plus years and I lived in the neighborhood for about seven and having myself been attached to the neighborhood and being here, I was, I was very impressed with the, with the entire proposal, the, the preparedness of this group to, to undertake this giant task. And as a, uh, an African American myself, who is running my own small business, being able to see Don in charge of this group and really leading them down this, this great path. I was I, very positive and I, I wanted to give my full support. Thank you. So Thank much. you, Justin. Thank Thanks, you. Justin. Next up we have Liz. Liz, go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Liz Sullivan. I live about 15 minute walk from the area. Um, I'll be brief, but I just wanted to go on the record and express my support. Um, I agree with everyone who said that the location is ideal. Um, and, you know, the, the project team, I know that they're always going to be available with the, if the community needs to pick up the phone or send them an email and they'll be responsive. Um, so I thank them for the presentation and look forward to their success. Best of luck. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Charlie, Charlie, you're up next. Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm a resident uh, in Lower Alston, north of the Pike, uh, so a resident in this, this community. Um, and I, I strongly oppose uh, this location. I think certainly uh, the our wonderful park, which is a gem of the community, is 100 feet away, uh, and it's filled with all types of you know, like positive community activities. This, this location is guaranteed to increase the amount of illegal marijuana usage, which is public smoking of marijuana, it's guaranteed to happen, right? And so, you know, I, I, I just wanted to state my opposition uh, of that on top of the, certainly the traffic and congestion, which we're already trying to deal with as a community. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for your comment. All right, Sarah. Sarah, you're up now. Sarah, you there? All right, sorry, I think she put something in the comments section, so I'll look for that. We'll go to Michael next. Michael. 
Hi, yes. Um, thank you for uh, the opportunity to, to uh, chime in here. Um, my family has resided on that stretch of Lincoln Street for uh, about 100 years. Um, I'm calling, representing my family uh, in, in our concerns, and I want to echo some of the comments that other people have made um, about the traffic, which is already overwhelming. Uh, it's been made worse and worse over the years with the development across the pike. Um, it, it's going to be made worse with the uh, 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 building going up across the, the street from there. Um, I remember when that building, when the Galaxy building went up, it's, it's always been kind of shoehorned in a tiny little parcel. Um, it, you know, it's, I, I think um, you're, you're overly optimistic about the, the amount of foot traffic that you're going to get. It's going to be um, more cars for an already um, overburdened road. Um, and I, I think the group behind it sounds wonderful. And I think you folks have really thought a lot of a lot of this through, but I think it's a terrible location um, and, and other locations should probably be considered. So thank you for, for allowing me to comment. Of course, thank you, Michael. Thank you for your comment. Up next, Robert. Robert, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead. Hi, uh, so I just wanna be on the record. Uh, so I was, I actually came in this, you know, initially against this, uh, but after this pre presentation, uh, this group uh, definitely shows a, a caring side, a, a professional side of this industry that's not common and I think is more geared toward the community, uh, which I find myself kind of oddly saying. Uh, it seems as the traffic is a major issue, and I'm very familiar with that, uh, the Lincoln intersection. I, I've, I've heard this, and I, I came up with a couple ideas. Uh, I was thinking perhaps, you know, Galaxy, uh, they, they do cameras and stuff, it says. So maybe, maybe the city or the Galaxy could put some kind of a smart camera you know, change, put cameras at the intersection, not for license plates, but something that increases the efficiency or traffic flow. Um, so that would really help the, you know, traffic. And then the other idea I had was delivery. So could they deliver this medicine to people so that it would reduce the amount of vehicles that would actually even have to come to the street? And then the whole thing with the park and the children's safety, I mean, first off, I'm a parent and I walk my three-year-old son in that park. It's, there's rarely anybody there. And I think that we shouldn't rely on, on Castle Leaf to you know, educate our children. I think that parents are the number one factor for our safety. And, you know, I was a, I was a student athlete growing up. I think that these kids are already above average kids that most likely are going to stay away from this. Um, so with all this being said, I want to be on the record as, you know, I think this should, I think somebody else said it. Uh, I think it's a no brainer. Um, I think we're getting with the times and uh, I think it's the best for the community. Great, thank you, Robert. All right. Up next is Erica. Erica, go ahead. Oh, great. <laughs> so after all this time, a lot of people already uh, said what I would like to bring to the table. Um, I I do appreciate you you guys trying to uh, present this plan to us, but I have been living in this neighborhood for over fifteen years, and I work in the school right on Market Street. Uh, our kid, uh, I mean, beside all the kids and the minors walking by, I am more concerned about the traffic. I have seen how much it like, I, I'm going to echo what Michael said. It has increased so much with the new buildings and the new homes and there's more to come. So I think you guys are really not understanding how busy it can get like and how I can be on Lincoln Street just to turn on Market Street. So I do not think we can support any more traffic in this neighborhood. I live blocks away from this 
and we already had issue uh, an issue with the Portsmouth Street and South Waverly, where it's two two way street with parking both sides, and you can it, it is it doesn't take uh, much to know that there's no way we can put any more cars anywhere in this area. So beautiful plan, beautiful place. Maybe some streets a little bit far from there because that is a very busy area, and I know there's some. Uh, residents that just mentioned that uh, because we live there and we know daily. It doesn't really matter if you're going to open at 10 a.m. We have dismissal at, at 3 p.m. on schools. We have a very, it's a very busy area. And I know for a fact all those buildings coming up, it's going to, if they have parking, would be for one car. And there's no way there's more cars on the streets. I don't know where's the parking that you guys saying that you're going to park those cars. It's not and and Brighton Boston's not going to do anything. There was someone also here that spoke saying that they've been trying to fix this issue with we have our the UPS trucks coming from Portsmouth and they go up and it's both way streets. So I appreciate I like I, I I've heard so many people that I know that support the plan by all means. I just need to know where the cars are going to go. It's not doable about the traffic besides kids around it's not doable with the traffic and i think you guys are going to notice that as soon as you open your doors Connor, thank you, Erica. welcome Connor, just on the traffic thank yeah thank yes. you traffic piece quickly just want to remind folks that again about 60 individuals are currently using this space for employment purposes and are arriving during rush hour and leaving during rush hour so when, pe when people talk about adding more cars, you have to remember that Castle Leaf as an employer is going away, meaning that those 60 individuals who predominantly take cars and modality are leaving. We're then, in addition to that, as we talked about, moving the hours to 10 a.m., which if you look at the traffic studies that were conducted in abutting parcels, Show that the I, I get the traffic in, in all of Boston is bad all the time, but uh, we're talking about shades of gray, I get. But by far is the worst, by far is the worst during rush hour peak times. The, we're not going to be open for that first peak time in the morning. Um, secondly, our employees are not going to be parking on site, which means that all that parking is, is dedicated to employees. Um, so that would mean we would have maybe as much as 20 to 25 spots on site. I also said we can only have probably around 60 people maximum inside before we turn to appointment only. So that would mean that it, like if we were to take this and just go to absolute worst case scenario, 50% of the folks would be driving. It's not gonna happen. Number one, we're not gonna have 60 people there at one time because the market is not supporting that right now. Two, uh, and that's just fact, if you look at the four open locations and there'll be many more open by then. Um, and uh, and again, we have an experienced team that uh, has operated facilities with zero incidences, including traffic violations, kind of like backups uh, onto sidewalks, et cetera. So I guess I would just say that, I, you know, I think in terms of the new residential <laughs> that's going next door to this, I feel like you're kind of making the point for us which is that this is going to be a neighborhood facility that people are going to walk to. People aren't going to drive their car from the residential, you know, new residential uh, right across the street, go across the street in their car to go to Castle Leaf. They're going to walk. So I just think that that all of that really should be considered as we're thinking about the uh, traffic, which I completely understand having driven through there most days of the week. So just want great. To Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Steve Herrera, you're up now. Yep, I'm basically reiterating what some other folks have said, but I just want to voice my support. I think I've, I've seen lots of these presentations and some are, I'm sure many will say brutal. And this one was very well thought out. I also fully support and love the idea that we have Duan, who's a local, has been involved with many, many facets of our neighborhood sort of leading the way. And I think it's great to see, you know, one of our own being able to do this. Great, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Going to a different Steve. Steve Socorroso, you wanna go ahead? Sure, thanks. Uh, so I live on West Sorrento, right around the corner from this, and 
I don't think this is something that a lot of people have talked about, but the building getting a facelift actually, I think is going to add to the neighborhood feel. And I think that that's quite an improvement on what we would be looking at otherwise. So even, you know, pro anti cannabis, I think that's one thing that's definitely a benefit here. And secondly, with the traffic issue, I don't understand how one store is really going to create too much traffic when these guys have already addressed it. So I'd like to go on the record in support of Castle Leaf. Great. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for your comment. All right. John Bruno. John. Hi, hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, John, go ahead. Hi, good evening. Hey, thanks an awful lot for bringing this forward. Uh, without revealing how old I am, I'm probably the oldest resident living in North Brighton that, uh, uh, understands this area, understands Lincoln Street, understands Leo Birmingham Parkway, and understands uh, Western Avenue. Uh, before I 100% support this, I just have a couple of comments. Um, first of all, being a former small business person for over 20 years, uh, Dwan, I applaud your effort to try to get in there, get your feet wet, and, uh, and, and really take a chance. And I understand personally the chance I did it for over two decades and I have no regret. So uh, in that area, I totally support your effort. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, a, a couple of questions. Uh, and I, and I know we've tossed around the, uh, the traffic concern and that's obviously a big concern because people are familiar with uh, Lincoln Street. I go back to when there wasn't a traffic light there. So if you think the traffic is bad now, you should have seen it when there wasn't a light. And uh, then I hope the city reconsiders the fact that making that two way would really, really not be uh, a positive uh, thing at all. Um, a, a couple of fast questions. How many, uh, on, uh, how many off street parking spots do you have? Uh, right now there, right now, uh, there are about 25, 27, depending on whether you're including that there's a, there's a little pull off in the back. That includes uh, two or three spots. So we're, we're we're right around 27 dedicated spots right now at Galaxy. Right. So so historically speaking, the uh, the organization in Brookline has far less parking spots. And quite honestly, their location uh, I would consider that a higher risk traffic concern than than Lincoln Street. So uh, the 25 spots is 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 a is a good number. Uh, another question I have is. How do you handle online ordering? And is that part of your express pickup? Michelle? Steve. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so the customers would order online and then they would come in, uh, pay for the product when they come in. And those transactions are anywhere from two minutes to two and a half minutes. So they're they're very quick transactions. And, and I just want to add, they're also scheduled, so mm -hmm. it allows us the ability to really uh, ensure that we're not uh, that we're spreading out when folks are coming. And right. they do get a they do get a text. So we once the order comes in, we pick their product, we put it together. Once that order is complete, they get a text message saying that their order is complete. So no one would be driving to the facility unless they have a completed order, um, and that helps with with traffic in line as well. So, so obviously that helps minimize and mitigate the, the 12, uh, 12 parking spots. Uh, crazy question, do, do you do online payment? No. Is that something that's regulated by the state that you can't do it? Uh, no, uh, oh, sorry, Jay. <laughs> no, go ahead, Michelle. I was going to say, as far as I know, it is um, I, I, because we have to validate we have to validate their ID uh, when they get to the facility. Um, so, as far as I know, there's no technology that does that. So, we do have to validate their ID on site. Yeah. So, there's a couple things. One, um, the uh, federal financing rules prevent credit cards being utilized, so you can use a debit card, and so you are able to do an online transaction where you pay. Uh, in advance using a debit card. Um, there are some technologies where you can actually upload your ID, but you still need to do the second second, and even right. the third ID check. In fact, at this location, we would be doing two ID checks, both to get in the facility and then at pickup. So 
Uh, it does allow for basically tri triplet authentication uh, if we to use that technology. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, uh, good, uh, good answer. And my final uh, concern is that uh, what are your peak hours? I mean, we know that there are peak traffic hours, you know, early in the morning and late in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. What are your peak hours for sales? Michelle, do you want to speak to your experience um, at the other locations that you staff uh, for CIRA in terms yeah, of what you see? Absolutely. So um, we usually see, you know, in the late afternoon, I'm sorry, late morning, early afternoon, a little bit of a bump. Um, and then we see a, another little bump and then it dies down um, throughout the day. And then when people get off work, we see a little bit of a bump as well. Um, so what about, Saturday, what about Saturdays? I mean, is that not your big day? Fridays and Saturdays are our biggest days. Um, you know, weekends, oh. that's, and that's typical for retail. So Fridays and Saturdays, and I would say generally most days follow that same pattern where a little bit of a bump in the afternoon, um, sorry, late morning, early afternoon. And then again, when people get off work. Um, so, you know, I think that this location will probably follow that same traffic pattern, but it's hard to say, right? Because this is going to be such a, a neighborhood store. So we may be busier in the, in the first part of the day, but. Um, right. I guess, I guess what I'm at, at probably trying to help you out here a little bit is that if traffic was a concern Monday through Fridays and the most business you do is on a Saturday, that, that that would mitigate Monday through Friday. I mean, look, I'm not on your team, but I would, that would be <laughs> part of a resolve. We appreciate Great. your comment. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you. All right, folks. It's eight o'clock. I'm feeling generous. I'm going to take two more callers and then I'm going to read off some of the Q and A's, uh, but then we'll wrap it up after that. We're, we're pushing past eight o'clock. Lauren McGrath, go ahead. I would just like to offer uh, my support in this location. It is definitely one of the best presentations I have seen. Uh, lived in the community for a long time and know that it's one of the best options we have. Great, thank you. Thank you. Call in user number 33, your hand raised, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me there? Yes, we can, go ahead. Hi, my name is Maya Hegarty. I, uh, I just wanted to call, I know we gotta keep it quick, but I, I totally support the proposal. I'm impressed with the team. Um, I also don't live too far from the location, and I think a previous caller, I think it was Steve Sicorsiorio, um, I think he made a good point about the uh, the facelift to the building, and I think it'll do a lot for our neighborhood. So I just want to uh, go on record and state my support. Great. Thank you. And thank then you for your comment. Things in the Q&A that are mostly comments. Hi, I do not want this candidate shop in location. I'm new to this neighborhood and would like to stay long-term and start a family here. This is not the only cannabis shop in the media area. How many do we need? Uh, so I think it was said earlier in the presentation, the city of Boston is gonna have 52 cannabis dispensaries. There are not 52 neighborhoods. That means there are gonna be more than one dispensary in a lot of neighborhoods. It goes by a, a five mile, excuse me, a 0.5 mile buffer. Um, so they're going to be spaced out accordingly. However, there will be multiple dispensaries likely in the Alston Brighton area. Um, sorry, excellent presentation. I own a business in Alston for the past 12 years. I'd welcome this business. I also live in Brookline, very close to Netta. This is, ne there's never a parking issue. Most of the customers use Uber and Lyft. Um, John, 50 plus year resident, full support of location and management team. Uh, great location and tax revenue for the city. Sarah, I'm a resident. I want to voice my support. There's always going to be controversy, but there are many stores that have been successful and not been problems for the neighborhood. Sarah, as a longtime resident of the area, and as a, excuse me, Sean, as father of three children under four who wants to balance all the variables, I feel comfortable with this location and the management team. Um, another resident echoing traffic. I am strongly against this RMD location due to the certain negative impact on park usage and potential traffic burden. Deb, I post a dispensary location. The proximity of the park means people will be illegally using cannabis in our park. Traffic is already a problem. We have a cannabis dispensary 
uh, less than a mile east on Lincoln, other dispensary one mile west in Watertown, and canvas delivery is already approved. Um, and then that loops it back. I want to go on record in full support of this location team. I drive by that way to work, and the current proposal team are going to be one one of the best. We get we get and address most of our concerns. We have to believe in them as local and engaged groups. Folks, we heard a lot of community feedback today from all sides. Uh, you know, some concerns that I think this team will continue to work with residents on. At this time, they do not have a date with the Boston Cannabis Board. That'll be the next step in the process. If they are approved by the Boston Cannabis Board, they would go on to the Boston Zoning Board of Appeals. There is no notification process with the Boston Cannabis Board. So if you are interested in getting updates and knowing when that date is set, please shoot me an email. You should have my contact information. It's connor.newman at boston.gov. It's on the flyer. If you would like to also send any of these comments to my office so we can have them on file and pass them along to the Boston Cannabis Board, that would be a big help as well. Um, you can also call my office at any point. I'm usually in on the afternoons and work from home in the mornings, uh, but happy to go through the process and happy to take comments as well. So folks, with that, we will conclude the meeting. I appreciate all of you participating in a very thoughtful manner and being respectful. This has been a very productive meeting and this is what the mayor's office likes to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Connor, for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.